Oh man, take a look at this picture. This has to be turned into some scroll saw art. Now the artist says that it's a gorilla wearing a hoodie. Looks kind of like a chimp to me, but you know, I'm not a primatologist and gorilla sounds cooler. So let's go with that. This might be my most difficult project to date. There are so many tiny pieces. There's gotta be like 12,000 pieces there. And they all vary in color too. Now contrasting colors, that's pretty easy. Variations in color, that's more difficult. But nothing starts without having a foundation. I need something to put all my pieces on top of. So let's start there. This is my veneer press. This is what I use to make those foundations for those scroll saw projects. Actually, I have a video on how to make one of these if you're interested. What I need to do is get some veneer and some MDF. I need to put it in this thing and I just squish it down. Okay, so not using the veneer press. Uh, this artwork's gonna be bigger than this. I usually do pictures that are regular size pictures, you know? So, I mean, this thing has a 12 inch capacity. It's pretty wide. If you start adding in the frame and everything, then those can get kind of large. This one's gonna be bigger than that. I gotta figure out a new way to do this. I found a solution. Well, I hope it's a solution. I went to a flooring place and found these bad boys. Uh, they are half inch thick marble tile. They are dead flat and they are hefty. So uh, I'm gonna just squish the crap out of it. Now, I, I did notice though that these are a little brittle. Whenever I flip it over on the backside, what I'm seeing is some pit marks, some pitting, some, some pit holes, pit holes. So, I don't want to break these. Now, they were kind of cheap. I ended up getting them like five or six bucks uh, per tile just because they're on sale, which is pretty sweet. I bought extra ones just in case, because I know me. So what I'm gonna do is uh, get some MDF and I'm gonna stick MDF to them. Figure that, well, that'll strengthen it up and then it'll make it even heavier. I've never tried to stick MDF on the tile before. So uh, I'm just gonna use some construction adhesive. I'm sure that'll work, right? I know I don't have to do this, but I feel like I should smear this around so it like gets all over. So I've just found a, a wedge, a shim, a shim, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna. That felt weird. I'm gonna throw some clamps on this and put it off to the side and let it sit all night and then we'll come back tomorrow and hopefully I got something that I can like squish my panels. It's a lot of work just to do some scroll sawing. Squish, squish. The adhesive worked. Oh, that's, that is heavy. And I got bored last night and uh, made one where I used epoxy instead of construction adhesive. And I mean, it worked too. Like it looks the same, except a lot messier and a lot more expensive, a lot more expensive. All right, now that I've got my veneer press, it's time to make that background. I need a super dark background. So what I'm gonna do is get a piece of wing gate. I don't need something huge because this isn't a massive project. So I'll just find a tiny piece. It's pretty amazing how small things just bring me joy. Like this little glue roller, this thing costs just a few bucks, but it's amazing. This is my secret weapon when it comes to veneer. A drywall knockdown knife. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. It only costs a few bucks and I got it like one of the box stores. Uh, it has a foam edge on it. So it's not gonna like ruin any of the veneer. And I just kind of squish, squish, make sure there's no air bubbles in it. Those tiles are weighty. Ooh.
I didn't want to waste a bunch of expensive veneer on the backside that you're not going to see, so I went with cherry. And I know cherry's pretty nice, but I got this for a ridiculously cheap price, so it cost me like literally a few cents. So while all of this is drying, this is my scroll saw drawer. I got all kinds of treasures in here. It's really just a bunch of offcuts from other projects. So if I find a little scrap of wood and I think it looks really cool, I'll throw it in here, save it for later. Watching glue dry is kind of boring, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick out all the colors I'm gonna need for this project. And it's really a whole lot of variations of brown from the hoodie all the way through all the colors and the gorilla. It's all browns. If for some reason there's not something in here that I really, really need, then I'll mill some stuff up, but I'm gonna try not to. I'd rather just use what's in this drawer. My panel's dry, looks good, and it is dead flat. So now I gotta work on the background for this artwork. Now, I don't wanna invest 40 plus hours on a piece of artwork and then find out I should've used a different color background, but I didn't do my due diligence. I picked out a couple different boards for my options, and then I took high resolution photographs of those. That means I could take those, throw those into Photoshop and make my own pattern or swatch. By doing this, now I've got something that's more realistic, and I could put that into the background of my picture. Then I can get an idea of really which color I should use. In this case, I'm looking at cherry and white oak. Decided to go with cherry, and now I need to mill this whole thing down because this side's flat, but this side isn't. So I'm gonna head over to the joiner and the planer, get both these sides flat, and make sure I flatten both of the edges. Then I can take that board, resaw it into thin pieces, glue those pieces together, and make a ultra wide, super thin panel. I know not all scroll sawlers have access to a million equipment, so what I'm gonna do is put some links down in the description below to some of the different wood species I use for this project, and I'll make sure those links are to boards that are already thin. Just know that I have no affiliation with these companies or sellers whatsoever. I want my panel to be really, really thin. I'm gonna glue it up a little bit thicker, but not much, just for some stability's sake. It helps me to keep my panel flat. And then I can actually sand it all down to the final size that I want. Probably under an eighth of an inch thick, so we're talking really thin. I got my cherry panel. It took me way too long to make this, but it's because I wanted to make sure that the grain was running up and down. I didn't want to have a lot of cathedral grain that you see in some woods, so I spent a bit of time on it. But it's all done. Now I also have my actual template itself. I like that I have a big printer so I can print out big sheets of paper. Whenever I didn't have this, I would just tape them together. You get the same effect. So here's my plan. I'm gonna stick this onto that and I'm gonna cut out the gorilla. I'm gonna keep the background, just cut out the gorilla. I remind myself that because I'll screw up and I won't keep the gorilla or I will keep the Maybe I'll put a sticky note that says, keep background, cut gorilla. I also have some contact paper here. So I'm gonna take the contact paper and I'm gonna put it on my panel. And then I'm gonna take some spray adhesive and spray the back of my template. Then I could put it on there, make sure it's really smashed down. Everything's where it needs to be at. Then I'm gonna cover the entire thing in packing tape. That'll just make sure that my template doesn't fray up as I'm cutting it. As far as the blade goes, I'm gonna use a number five crown tooth blade. I'll drill a pilot hole and then start cutting out my shape from there. My goal is to cut on the outside of the black line. That's gonna be the shadow. So whenever I start actually cutting the pieces to make my artwork, I wanna have that solid line, that space between the background and my workpiece. Cutting out the outside shape's not really too bad. I mean, there's a couple areas that are really jagged, so it's make a cut, back off, make another cut, and then I'm done with that section. Then move on to the next one. I can do that several times, but then there's other parts that are just swooping curves. I can cut that pretty easy. I will try to keep as much of the gorilla intact as I possibly can. Who knows, I might need some of those pieces later on just for alignment purposes. It's best to be kind of safe than sorry. I think that looks good. I'm pretty happy with the cherry. Now it's time to do some actual scroll sawing. So I've printed off my template, well, at least part of my template. I'm gonna start with the hoodie. And to do that, I'm gonna use walnut. That's gonna be the darkest color uh, for this. Now this piece of walnut is about a quarter inch thick, which will probably be the thickest material I'll also use for this. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut out that piece with an X-Acto knife. And I'm gonna put some contact paper over my board. Spray my paper with some Super 77 spray adhesive, stick it onto my board, put a little packing tape over that, then start cutting it. I'm gonna start with a number five crown tooth blade. That's kind of my go-to size for most of the, for the projects I make. Now, if I find that that blade's a little bit too thick for certain cuts, then I'll drop down. 
I'll most likely drop down, probably all the way to a size two zero, as low as I can get for some of these cuts. It looks like there's a lot of little pieces. Essentially, I'm gonna cut this out twice. I'm gonna cut around the perimeter of the hoodie. I wanna cut on the outside of that black line, just like I did with the silhouette. Then I'm gonna come back and cut on the inside of that black line. And in all of that black line, I'm gonna save. That's all my shadow. So I'm gonna save those pieces, set those off to the side. That's gonna help with the alignment of everything later on. I'm doing my best to keep the black lines as whole as possible because, well, I use that for alignment whenever I put all the pieces onto the artwork. And if I cut those into a whole bunch of little pieces, it's gonna make it really difficult to glue things in the right place. I just thought of something. Probably should have stack cut some of these things because I'm cutting out the hood, but I know there's also highlights in there. So if I cut them out individually, maybe those pieces won't necessarily go together the way I want to. So I'm gonna stop and I need to find some sycamore that's super light. And I know I dug through my drawer before. I didn't find the exact color I wanted, so that means I'm gonna have to mill up some boards, but hey, I wanna make sure that this is right. So I'm gonna take those and stack those together and then cut them out all at one time. Hopefully that helps. I love putting on a fresh blade. Look at that, that is shiny. Ooh, no sanding required. That's one of the things I love about a crown tooth blade, that type of finish. Now that I got the pieces cut out, I'm gonna break them apart and peel off that blue tape take the sycamore and the walnut and glue them back together again so it makes one big piece. And to do that, I'm just gonna use some CA glue because, well, it's fast. And then I have my one piece, I can put glue on the bottom of that and then glue that actually onto my artwork. I got my black lines in place and so I'm just gonna take this dude and drop them gently in here. I'll make sure that's exactly where I want it at. The hood looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna cut out the sleeves for the jacket and those seem pretty straightforward. I mean, there's a couple highlighted areas that I might have to do. So, you know, that's a little of a challenge. And, but, you know, really it's those sharp corners. There's a lot of inside and outside corners, but I also wanna keep the black line as intact as I can. So trying to balance that. Some of these inside corners are really tight. So I'm gonna drop down to like a number two blade so I can try to get in there. Now the good thing about a crown tooth blade is it's a really clean cut, so I don't have to worry about staying in there anyway. The downside is, is that it doesn't really remove a whole lot of sawdust and I'm still cutting thick pieces. So that's gonna make it difficult. We're gonna try our best. Now one thing that will help me with some of the delicate uh, pieces is a piece of MDF. This is a trick I learned a long time ago. I don't even know how I did it, but uh, just a, a thin piece of MDF and I use it as a zero clearance insert so I can saw it in half and put it on my on my saw top. And now if I'm cutting delicate pieces, I've got a stable surface and I don't have to worry about them like falling into that void between the blade and the, the saw top, like that, that black hole there or the dust collection. It really helps out. I knew I was gonna have to cut out small pieces, but this is kind of ridiculous. And I, I sort of feel like they're gonna get smaller. Seriously, stack cutting these, th these pieces are fitting beautifully together. I dropped that last arm in place and you can actually see the artwork coming to life, which is pretty cool. 
It's also the easiest part of the project, and well, we're about to start the hardest part, which is the face. I'm really liking using Sycamore for this because the grain already kind of looks like skin texture to me. And I've got a couple pieces that are really white, and then right next to it, you have more of this vivid brown color. And I think that would knock out two of the variations right there. Also have this kind of like dingy, kind of in between, and this is Sycamore as well. So it just tells you the different uh, varieties of the colors, depending on, on the board you get. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, stack a bunch of these together and try to cut them out. This is all about doing some layering. I'm gonna put some blue painter's tape on two pieces and I'm gonna glue those together with CA glue. And then put more painter's tape and then add another board and another board. With this one, I'm gonna end up with holly, which is super white, then the sycamore, which is a little bit off-white, then that weird tan sycamore, then the vivid sycamore, and then some walnut. I tried to stack cut them and uh, I didn't like it. There was too much kerf. So all that sawdust that's being cut away between the pieces, put them all together, it was just too much. If it was one piece and another piece and I put them together, okay. But when you're dealing with like three or four, a little tough. So I'm recutting them out one at a time. Took a little sanding block and rounded over the edges pretty good. I wanna have a kind of a soft look for this and I'll do that before I install each piece. The face is gonna be a lot of cutting out the same thing over and over again. So I'm gonna take my, my template itself and I'm gonna cut out the shape of well, wherever a piece is supposed to be at. I'm gonna put that back into my artwork. Then I'm gonna take my actual pieces, cut them out individually, which could be between one and, and four times, have them all glued together, put those inside that spot in the template that I cut out, take the template out and repeat. Okay, I'm ready to start the lower face area. That's a tough one. Uh, I'm not gonna do the stack thing. I'm just gonna cut them out individually, even though that means I'm gonna be cutting these out a bazillion times. But, you know, I, I, I like to print off something like this so I can have a visual right here as I'm working. And there's a lot, there's a lot going on there. So, uh, yeah, we'll cut them out individually. Finally got the nose in place. It's late. I'm tired. I'm back at it. I got some coffee in me. Now, keep working on that face. So I'm gonna start with some light sycamore. The lightest sycamore I have, that's gonna be the bulk of it. And then I'll cut tiny pieces, a little color of this, a little splash of that color, and glue all those pieces together. That's just gonna give it that, uh, that depth, that illusion that makes it look like there's some shadow. Because again, we don't want contrast, we want variation. I mean, on their own, each piece takes a whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort, and it looks pretty good. But then you put them all together, and it's like this Voltron of awesomeness. This is my Dremel. And uh, I have it on this router base, and this works pretty well for drilling holes, because whenever you're dealing with scroll sawing, you don't want to have a, a big pilot hole when you're trying to put your blade in there, because, well, then you got to try to figure out how to cover up a big pilot hole. But with, uh, with a Dremel, uh, I got, I found these. These are little jewelers micro drill bits. They're insane. They're so tiny that uh, if you use like a size zero blade, it's just like the middle one. It's pretty crazy. So uh, I use these a lot. So I'm gonna, I already have one in there. Cool. I'm gonna drill a whole bunch of holes and then I can put my blade through there and then cut out shapes that are on the inside that I don't have access to from the outside.
Check out them teeth. There's a whole lot going on up there. I, I guess I'm gonna start with holly, because it's the whitest wood you can get. And then we'll go from there. Because there's a lot of little colors that are just shoved in there. I, I don't know if it all makes sense. But when you stand back and look at it, it looks pretty sweet. I kind of feel like I've run a marathon, to be honest with you. Finally done with the face. Uh, I think it's time to work on the hands, maybe, next. We're already in those skin tones. Might as well go for it. Looking at the picture here, for the highlighted areas, those would be the, the super white sycamore we were using. And then the most of the hand would be that vivid brown that we were using. We have boards that have both of those. So I might be able just to use one board and not have to cut out two different pieces. There's still some dark areas uh, down by the wrist, but that looks like we would use walnut for it, and they're on the outside, not like landlocked. So if they're on the outside, they're much easier to be able to cut. So we can stack those and then cut them out. And we'll, we'll see how that goes. I've been cutting out pieces for the hands, and uh, I'm starting to go cross-eyed from just cutting so many pieces for so long because this project's taken a, a long time. So I'm busting out the magnifying glass. I don't use it for every project. This one, I need it. Big old, big old screen and uh, it's got a light too. Should make it a little bit easier. One of those days. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm getting delirious. All right, hands are done. The face is done. All those complexity in the, in the teeth is done. All the shadows of the hands are done. The worst is behind me. So now, next up is... Oh, he's wearing a gold chain with individual loops and shadows around said loops. I'm seriously using tweezers. That's how tiny these pieces are. Tweezers. Home stretch on this picture, I went ahead and knocked out the lower jacket because that was really easy. Just a couple of big pieces. Now I get to focus on the shirt. And I think it's kind of a cool shirt. I should have made a custom shirt that matches it. Missed opportunity. Something I noticed that's really cool is the shirt kind of plays a trick on the eyes. So take a look at it. The shirt is tan, and then you have the jacket, which is really dark brown. And then you have the shadow on the shirt, which is kind of behind the jacket. And it's that in-between color, right? Take away the tan. It's the same color. The shadow and the jacket are the same color. Your eye makes it look like it's a different color when it's actually the same. This isn't a very complex section, but it's gonna take a little bit of time just to get things right, because you're gonna have pieces that fit kind of in pieces that kind of fit in pieces, like nesting dolls. I got a blowout. The foot fell off my stool. Ah, I'm all lopsided. I'm lopsided. Whew. 
I usually peel the templates off my pieces before I glue them together, but doing this shirt, there were a couple areas that were really thin and having the template on there with the tape kind of helped just to hold things together. So until I glued them all together and then I have one solid piece and it's stronger that way. We did it. We actually did it. It looks like the picture. I, okay, we well still gotta do a little bit of sanding and then apply finish, but we did it. This took a little bit of time. Uh, uh, I think I said that it would take um, 40 plus hours on a piece of artwork. 40 plus hours on a piece of artwork. Yeah, in reality, it was more like 250 hours. Honestly, sanding this thing's not gonna be too bad because I sand every piece before I install them, which is what takes a little bit more time. So as far as the sanding goes, I, I just do a little bit of touch up stuff. So like I have these little contour sanding blocks, these little uh, micro sanding thingamajigs. These are pretty cool, I, I like them. So I'll use this just to hit a couple of areas, just to give it a little bit of relief here and there. And I've got some chisels, I'll, I'll scrape a little dry glue. It only takes me a couple minutes. I'm gonna get that knocked out, but then I can focus on finishing. It's crazy what a little bit of spray lacquer can do. It makes all those colors just jump off of the canvas. And it's the first time we get to actually see the fruits of our labor. A big thank you to the CPR community over on Patreon for voting on this artwork compared to all the other ones I could have made. Y'all really put me through my paces this time, but it was worth it because it turned out so cool. All right, and until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.